when you're talking about a proton and it being a, a fundamental particle, uh, such an elementary unit, uh, uh, the building block of our universe, um, there's a very specific reason why that is, you know, coming from the, what, what Nassim has shown. Um, and that is that that size of the proton is an exact equilibrium in terms of holographic information with the information of the entire universe. So uh, at that very specific size that the proton exists at, uh, it has exactly, uh, in terms of the Planck information density, uh, it has exactly the same Planck information density as the uh, information of the entire universe. Uh, so, you know, that's sometimes referred to as the holographic mass, which is, uh, if you took the vacuum energy inside a proton, it's 10 to the 55th grams, 10 to the 112 joules per uh, meter squared. Uh, well, that 10 to the 55th grams uh, is the exact mass of the universe. So it's at this exact equilibrium. Uh, and so one of the things about that is that, uh, the, the vacuum, although uh, it's alternatively referred to as the ether, so i.e. It, it is seemingly very ethereal, uh, but still it exerts uh, force. Uh, now, um, it's a source of all forces, but uh, when you talk about, for instance, uh, the quality of inertia, uh, why does it take a lot of energy to get a stationary object moving? Why does it require a lot of energy to accelerate an object? Uh, that's an unanswered question in, in conventional physics, but if you look at it from uh, Hermann's unified physics model, it's because it's pushing against an entire universe of vacuum structure. So it, it takes a little bit of extra energy to push against all that, that vacuum structure. Well, so similarly, the proton has a quantum gravitational pressure of that vacuum energy that wants to expand out but it's being perfectly balanced by the, uh, all the pressure, so to speak, of the, the vacuum structure of the entire universe pushing in on it. Uh, but then of course, what happens is if, it were to ex uh, if a proton were to escape the boundary condition, the event horizon of the universe, um, it would no longer have the same outward pressure. Uh, and so it would go to the next stable equilibrium that is, it would expand uh, until in the larger universe that it's in, it would be the same size as the previous universe it just came from. Uh, you know, so uh, it, it, indeed, uh, you, you know, our, our universe in that sense was a, a proton in a previous universe that, that is now a sister universe uh, to our own. Um, uh, and Similarly, uh, in that larger universe, our universe would appear something like a, a, a proton scale object um, because that's because it's going to be at that same uh, necessary energetic information equilibrium point. Uh, now, in terms of being compressed down, uh, you, you know, so the universe could escape into a larger universe and expand out. And that could go on ad infinitum. But in terms of the universe being compressed back down to a proton, uh, there's a reason why that is unlikely to happen. Uh, and that's because it would have to go inside of a universe that is the same size or smaller than it for there to be any kind of compression. Really, it, for there to be any kind of compression, it has to be inside a universe that, that's smaller. That can't really happen, you know? Uh, so th th there's no way to get our universe into a smaller universe to compress it. You need to compress it to get it into a smaller universe, but the only way to do that is, you, you know, so I, th that probably doesn't happen 
but you know, because it's probably infinite, you know, um, it, it, it's always at some scale magnitude. Our, our universe is always appearing as of a Planck scale dimension or a proton scale dimension, you, you know, because uh, uh, most likely this uh, magnitude of scale is infinite within the multiverse.